Okay, welcome back to the second part of One Man's Faith. Uh, last week, I took a little detour and we talked about uh, the feasts of Israel that are happening at this time. Last week was, was Rosh Hashanah, the hit of the year, or the uh, Feast of Trumpets. That's another term for it. When, when Paul says, when the, uh, and the dead shall rise at the great trumpet blast, he, was, he knew what that great trumpet blast was, and that is the last blast of, of the series giving at Rosh Hashanah. So Rosh Hashanah is going to be important to us because I believe that's when the resurrection is going to, well, not the resurrection, well, it is a resurrection, the taking away, okay, which we lovingly call the rapture, is going to occur at Rosh Hashanah sometime in the, in the future. I'm not even going to say it's near. I don't know. I'm not supposed to know. You're not supposed to know. Only God knows. Jesus doesn't even know when he's coming back. He's just got his bags packed and ready to go, if I can use that terminology. So we, we took a detour. Um, Wednesday, uh, the 12th, is uh, Yom Kippur. It's the, it's the holiest day in the Jewish calendar. It's the day, uh, we call it the Day of Atonement. So that occurs on the 12th. And then next week, actually starting this Sunday night, uh, which will be the 16th, is the start of of the Feast of Tabernacles, all right? Uh, and I've talked about that before. Tabernacles was associated with the millennial period of time uh, where, where even, the, even the Word of God, if you look at it, I think in Leviticus 23, it's, it's except for the day one and day eight, it's a day of rejoicing, all right? Those three, these three... Uh, um, feast Jesus has yet to fulfill, and He's going to fulfill them at that time. There'll be there'll be the rapture. There'll be uh, Yom Kippur, which will be at the end of the seven years of tribulation, and then Rosh Hashanah. I mean, excuse me, uh, uh, Sukkot, which is which is the Feast of Tabernacles, will come right after that, and that deals with the millennial period, the time when Jesus comes back. So now, so that means a couple of weeks ago, we started by looking at hearing by faith or hearing with faith. Galatians 3, 2 and 5 both use that term. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by hearing with faith? And there he's specifically talking about us. Did we receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by hearing with faith? Well, it's with hearing with faith. This, in verse 5 it says, So then he who provides you with the Spirit and works miracles among you, did he do that by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Even God, remember we talked about this, even God made things by faith. With the hearing of faith, by that when God spoke, he heard it, faith built, and it created it. When God said, Light be, he was speaking it, he heard it, and faith came, and it was created. And in like manner, we create things. We've got, and we've got to watch what we say. We looked at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. It says, we are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. Our words do things. We're made in Jesus' image. We're made in God's image, in Jesus' image. We're made in their image, all right, with their likeness even. And so since God created by saying things, we create by saying things. Proverbs uh, 18 says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. That's serious business. And uh, there's another scripture, Matthew 12 says, I tell you that every careless word that people speak, 
they shall give an accounting for it in the day of judgment. Whoa, that's heavy. Every careless word. If you said, oh, you're so, oh, you're so stupid. Well, I didn't mean it. That's a careless word. You see, because you spoke it. And when you speak it, you speak it into existence, and it can even be used against you by our adversary. He will hold it. He will use it against you in the courtroom of heaven to discredit you. So we've got to be careful. Every careless word we shall give an account of. And he says in the next verse, verse 37, for by your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned. So that's the power of the word. It's not just, and it's not just a thing of judgment later, it's even now. Because Proverbs says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. It's now that we have life. So we've got to be careful because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. That's the only way you get faith is by the Word of God. And so I want to suggest to you, when you read the Bible, read it out loud so that you hear what you're speaking. Try it and see. You may say, oh, well, that's a stupid thing to do. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, because you hear what you speak. You don't normally run at the mouth and not hear what you're saying. You hear it, and thereby, when you hear the word, faith comes. So I want to encourage you, even when you read the word of God, read it out loud. Get into a quiet place or whatever and read it out loud when you're reading to yourself, okay? Now, the rest of, the rest of this time, I want to I look a little further, starting with verse 10. And I'm calling this to law or not to law, okay? <laughs> that is the question. What do we do? He says in verse 10, For as many as are the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone who does not abide by the things written in the book of the law to perform them. Uh, the New Living says this, but those who depend on the law to make them right with God are under his curse. For the scripture says, cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey all the commands that are written in God's book of the laws. All right, we've got to be careful because if you obey one law, you've got to obey all of them. You can't, we can't jump from faith to law back to faith again. That doesn't work because it's been set up that if you obey one of the laws, you have to live by all the laws. All right? If we don't, and let me carry this a little further. If we don't look and treat each other through the eyes of agape love, we put each under under the law. That's a little heavy, huh? Let me give you some examples. You go to Appleton's, you see somebody from your church buying wine. And you go say, oh, Bill, I just saw Jim in the store buying wine. Now, what have you done? You've put him and you under the law. Actually, technically, there is no law against drinking. You won't find in the Word of God, you won't find in the, in the Torah, thou shalt not drink. As a matter of fact, wine was probably the way to, to, to get liquid in because, because a lot of times the water wasn't purified and all. And so 
And so dr drinking wine was a thing. Oh, but Neil loses grape juice. Listen, guys. Contrary to some people, it's more than grape juice. If you look at the at at the miracle of turning water into wine at Cana, you know some you know some people will say, oh well, that was just a very good grape juice. Well, the wine master doesn't say, hey, most people serve the best first and then bring out the cheap stuff later when people are inebriated and they wouldn't know the difference. But instead, you have saved the best for last. It wasn't grape juice. I'm sorry, it wasn't grape juice. As a matter of fact, Jesus, when, when he says, do this in remembrance of me, was not using grape juice. He was using wine. Paul tells Timothy, hey, take a little wine from your stomach. So, so the, the only command, if you want to call it a command, it says don't get drunk. Matter of fact, in one in Galatians, Galatians or Colossians, it says don't get drunk with wine, but be drunk in the spirit is what it really says. It's not against wine. It's, a, it's, it's that, hey, don't get drunk on the wine. Get drunk in the spirit. It's a better high. So we put each other under the law. Now, now Sally, who saw Jim, is putting him under the law. Jackie is walking through the nugget, going to the Harvest Cafe. She sees John pulling on the one-armed bandit. <gasps> He's gambling. Sally, I just saw John gambling. What have we done? We put each other under the law. But you know, there's nowhere that says, thou shalt not gamble. Think about that for a minute, okay? Go ahead, get a cup of coffee, maybe a piece of pie, or you can save me one and give it to me later. I got to take a break. I'll be right back. 